Okay, let's discuss remote viewing. Uh, the two most popular features in surveillance systems these days is remote viewing and motion activated recording. What is remote viewing? Remote viewing is the ability to view live video and recorded video through smartphones, through tablets, through the internet, and through home or business networks. It's the ability to manage and view your system without being in front of the DVR. Now what we're going to go through applies to all surveillance systems. As far as setting up remote viewing, um, it's usually the last thing you do with your system. You, get, you bring the cameras in, you get the DVR working with the cameras, everything's plugged in, working great. There's only one connection that's required um, to get remote viewing going, and that is uh, the, the DVR has a network connection, and you simply take a network cable, Cat5, Cat6, it doesn't matter, just a standard network cable. You plug it into there, and then you plug the other end into your internet modem. That's it. That is the hardware setup for remote viewing. You can go through a, a, a switch. So for example, maybe you can't get a cable from your DVR to your, your modem, but you do have switches maybe in a business, in a warehouse, or, or, or in your basement of your home, you have a switch that is connected to the modem. Then you can simply just connect the DVR to the switch, and the switch has a cable going to the modem, and that's the same thing as direct connect. Okay? That, that achieves the same thing. But that connection right there is all that you have to do. As far as setup goes with our systems, you have two options. Make that connection, and you have to be on site. You can't make the connection and then go home and call up and want to finish remote viewing. You have to be on site with the DVR. Um, there's a quick start guide you can pick up and follow, and it tells you what to do. But we recommend just making this connection and then calling our 800 number and letting our tech guys either walk you through it, or you can actually give them access to it, and they can log on and set it up for you, make sure everything's working right. Average setup time is five to 10 minutes. Uh, if we run into problems, we may have to, uh, with your help, call your internet provider and have them open a port, because a lot of internet providers will, will close all access ports, and like port 80 needs to be open uh, for access. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, now as far as this link from the DVR to, to your modem, you'll notice this is a wireless modem. There is no wireless connection that you can use from the DVR to the modem. You have to hardwire it. Um, people might think, well, why, why that in this day and age with wireless, why is that? You've got multiple cameras streaming high definition video, 30 frames a second, into the DVR. If you've ever downloaded uh, um, you know, an HD movie, think about downloading four of them at the same time and then trying to stream them through your wireless connection. Uh, it would just pull the speed right down to nothing. It would gobble up every ounce of bandwidth that you had. The frame, the refresh rates would be horrible. You would be frustrated and you would think that this is a horrible surveillance system. And that has nothing to do with it. Surveillance system is great. It's a great server. It's fast. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to. But you got a bottleneck with a wireless connection. Because of that, Manufacturers don't make wireless connections. They don't want that kind of heartburn and frustration for them or for you. So you do have to get this connection made. Now this connection can be up to 250 feet long from the DVR to the unit or from the DVR to a switch. But you gotta have the network connection to do it. Once the connection's made um, and the ports are up and open, everything's working, okay? Uh, at that point, if you're using smartphones or tablets, you download a free app, um, you put in your username, your password, and you're logging on directly to the DVR. You're going from the smartphone to the satellites, from the satellites to the internet, through the internet to your modem, from your modem to your DVR. And all that can happen with one to two second delay time, which is amazing. Now, if you have a slow broadband service or, or internet speed, the frame rate and, and the response time, it can, be, it can be low, it can be really slow if you don't have a good broadband connection. If you're, cell, if you're out in the desert and you have cell coverage but the signal's not great, 
you can log on and watch your phones, but you might see a four or five, ten second delay before the video shows up, and you'll see a really slow frame rate. Now there's some things you can do. If, you, if you're in a bad spot and, then, and, and that's happening, instead of having all, the, all four cameras or eight cameras or whatever you're doing on one screen, you can just pull, choose one camera, pull that up, and now you're just streaming one camera to the phone rather than four. Okay, so there's some, some adjustments that you can do that way. But let's talk about your broadband service. That is the one variable with all the systems. These systems are designed to work flawlessly. It's that internet provider that's the variable. The service you have has to be broadband and it can't be satellite. It can't be wireless. Like HughesNet is a good example of a good satellite provider. They won't play ball. They won't open the port needed for you to have access because they know how much data you're going to be uploading and they know it's going to be frustrating and it's not going to work. Okay, so you have to have a land-based uh, broadband connection. This is not our requirement. This is all surveillance systems requirement. Okay, but let's talk about uh, your broadband service, your internet provider. When you're sitting in front of a computer and you're surfing the internet and it's fast, and you're loving it, you have a fast download speed. Okay, and you think about it, you're taking all this data, all these pictures, and it's downloading onto your computer. So you have a download speed, and that's usually a good one, is 20 to 30 megabits per second. That's fast. The problem is, a lot of these providers tell you about that, but they don't tell you that your upload speed is 1 to 2 megabits per second. Oh, why would you do that? And it's like, well, it's because it's not used that often because how often do you upload things to the internet? You know, you might do something and send an email. It doesn't take 20 to 30 megabits to send an email. Um, but you're uploading a large amount of information. And so for, broad, for sur HD surveillance systems, you really need four megabits or faster, okay? One to two will work, but you're going to be back to that slow frame rate, that slow connection, um, and you're going to be frustra frustrated with it. It's not our system. It's your internet provider and the speed. So um, if that's happening or before you do connection, you might want to call your internet provider and ask them what your upload speed is. And if it's less than four, ask them to increase it. It's that simple. Initial setup, like I said, takes you know maybe 10 minutes, but once in a while they'll block a port needed. They'll do it for a security reason, um, and they just do it to everything. They just now we're, we're, we're turning off the port, so you may have to call your internet provider once we get things set up and say, hey, can you turn on port 80, please? And uh, right from a computer, they can turn on what's needed. If they'll follow our instruction, they'll turn it right on. Everything will work. That's really the only difficulty we run into on occasion. With them. Uh, and it's not, it's not that common. Okay, now security wise, well I'm not connecting that thing to the internet, you never know. This is not a computer. This is not a PC and this is not a Mac. It's a hardware based solution. And what that means is that it's not vulnerable to viruses, it's not vulnerable to attacks. You can't hack into them. It's hardware based. That's what makes them so reliable. That's why they run for years. That's why you put your surveillance DVR like mine. I put it in my furnace room of all places and I use my computer upstairs to log on and view it. I don't go downstairs once a week and make sure it's working because I know it's working. It's always working. It's a hardware based solution. And they just work. Um, but that gives you an example and, and how I use mine, that's a good example of what you can do with remote viewing. So I took my DVR put it in the furnace room, I had a switch down there, I plugged it into the switch, the switch was already in the modem. Now my computer, which is also uh, plugged into the internet modem, I can log in from my computer upstairs. The signal never leaves and goes into the internet, I'm just going through my network down to the DVR. There's absolutely zero delay in frame rate, there's zero drop in quality. Uh, it's just like being in front of the DVR. I just don't have to stand in my furnace room to, to view things and, and play back. I do it from there. And I can do the same thing from my work computer. I can log off from my home. I can change parameters. I can turn things on. I can do playback. I can view live video. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. And the initial setup, once it's set up, you're good to go and it's working.